The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Our world today is being tested regarding what is it hoping in. This is a good time for all of us who are Christians, you guys. This is a good time for us. We have the truth of God. Let's be honest, nobody wants to hear from us. They want to hear what we have. And we have God's truth. And God's truth brings hope. In this corner, man. And in this corner, God. Today, Jack Hibbs challenges us to seek him face to face in the message, The Great Face Off. Revisionists would have you believe the Bible had little to do with the making of America, but that's simply not true. In his excellent book, 100 Bible Verses That Made America, Robert J. Morgan explores how scripture has played an integral role in our nation's history from its founding to today. In short devotion-like chapters, you'll read how specific Bible verses influence leaders and events that have shaped America as we know it. God's not done using scripture to impact the nation. He's looking for men and women of faith to influence history. Will you be a part? Reignite your love for both your country and your Bible through this compelling new book, 100 Bible Verses That Made America, is our gift to you and thanks for your donation to the Ministry of Real Life with Jack Hibbs. To get your copy, go to jackhibbs.com, scan the QR code, or call 877-777-2346. Order your copy now. Well, have you ever seen two prize fighters looking at each other, staring each other down, intimidating each other? It's kind of funny if you think about it, but it's not funny when you think about the Word of God. The Word of God stares us down. And in fact, the Bible tells us that there's a day of judgment where God's law will judge all those who never fled to Jesus as Lord and Savior. Can you imagine that? That everyone will appear before God There will be those who know Jesus and appear before God, and Jesus is our advocate. There are those who refused Jesus Christ and life, and they'll stand before God with no advocate, with no hope, with no redemption. The Bible's very clear about this. It's heaven with Jesus, and it's hell without him. So this is why we bring these programs to you, that you might come face to face with the reality that you need to know God. You don't need to know anybody else in this world, so to speak, that's gonna help you in the end, but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So grab your Bibles, get ready, dive in to this study and write down what God might be speaking to you about as we, so to speak, come face to face with God in his word. And may he speak to you. May he speak to us in Jesus' name. Have you ever noticed that when there's the crisis moment, someone passes or the issue is so beyond you? Like when that mother and that father, when they say, when they realize we cannot, we've done everything to save our child, there's nothing we can do, and the doctors will not even let us into the hospital. We surrender and you give up. You know, there's a way of giving up that's hopeless. And then there's a way of giving up that's victory. One's a surrender. And one is the surrender. And there's a big difference. But in that moment, by the way, when it's reverent, there's just something about it. Nobody can say anything. If your dad dies, or your mom dies, or your grandmother dies, or your child dies, you want to know how you comfort that person? Go to them and shut up. Go to them and sit there and just be with them. Don't say anything. 
There's a moment that is so transcendent that only the presence of God can be felt in the moment. Let God do his ministry, but just sit with them. The time will come when you can speak. But you know that moment when you're there and you go, I don't know what to say. That's what Peter did. Peter said, I don't know what to say, so I'm going to start saying something. On the Mount of Transfiguration, he said he didn't know what to say, so he started talking. Don't do that. And that's very important. Excuses. Misguided faith will generate them. Listen to what Donald Gray Barnhouse, the great pastor in Philadelphia said in yesteryear. He says, what right or resource or privilege are you planning on using that God will let you into his heaven? What are you going to, what trump card are you holding that's going to get you in? In Luke chapter 18, verse 9, check this out. This is powerful. Luke 18, 9, and Jesus spoke this parable, parabolic. He dropped alongside them this truth, right alongside their head, to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous <laughs> and despised others. By the way, those two things go hand in hand. When you're self-righteous, you despise others. Why can't you be more like me? Oh, gosh, that is spectacularly repulsive, incredible. <laughs> Verse 10, two, Jesus said, two men went up to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, a professional religionist, and the other, IRS agent, <laughs> tax collector. Who loves a tax collector? The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Yeah, I like that. Basically, he's praying, ain't nobody listening but himself. He's praying with and to himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Is this sickening? Verse 13 and the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Booyah. That's it. I tell you, Jesus is speaking, that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Man, that's it. That's incredible. The great Catholic reformer Martin Luther said, the principal point of the law, listen everybody, is to make men not better, but worse. That is to say, to show them their sin, that by the knowledge thereof, they may be humbled, terrified, bruised and broken, and by this means may be driven to seek grace and so come to the blessed Christ. That is one of the most simple, clear, direct statements you're ever going to hear regarding why does God give us the law? It's to break your pride. Chuck Swindoll, anybody remember Chuck Swindoll? Yeah. Chuck Swindoll said, if sin were blue, we'd be blue all over. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. I love that. So you think about the law, when we open up the law of God. So Paul in the book of Romans is teaching that you will enter heaven by faith in Jesus Christ because Christ alone has met the requirements of the law. By transfer, when you put your faith in him, he transfers his righteousness to you. God's law looks on the inside and says, I see this about you. I know this about you. And if you're silent and if you're quiet, He's going to tell you, Jack, this is what's wrong with you. There's a loss in the noise of an elusive hope. Hope's a big thing today. It's, hope is always a big thing, but our world today is being tested regarding what is it hoping in. And uh, this is a good time for all of us who are Christians, you guys. This is a good time for us. We have the truth of God. Let's be honest. Nobody wants to hear from us. They want to hear what we have. And we have God's truth. And God's truth brings hope. It's, you, don't have to, you don't have to try to bring hope. God's word is hope. Amen. And we need to give it. But is your hope 100% trustworthy? Is your hope sure? 
See, when we're young and we're feeling good and all that kind of stuff, we don't think about it. But when the test comes or when life begins to wear on or something happens, what's your hope in? I, you know, if I watch all the commercials, I, I'm supposed to hope in Bitcoin now or crypto, according, you know, Matthew Damon, Matt Damon, I'm supposed to trust in him now and buy crypto or whatever it is. But we're talking about eternity here forever. The great thing is God's hope permeates this world and comes into your life. But what you don't want to do is have an elusive hope, a false hope. Number one, it deceives us. If you'd mark that down, verse 20, it deceives us. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, Paul is announcing by the deeds of the law, what do you, by, by you doing a performance and saying, I have been a good person. Going back to Donald Gray Barnhouse, what, what rights or privileges or what resources do you have that you are going to say to God on the day of your death? This is why you should let me into heaven. If it's anything about you, it's not going to work. We can have a hope that is false because the thing that we're hoping in is broken. A lot of people think that their life will, come, will become complete because they, have a, they, they love the idea of marriage, for example. They love the idea of marriage. And so because they love the idea of marriage so much, they love the hope that they think the idea of marriage is going to bring them, but then they marry a bozo. And then they wonder why it doesn't work. And uh, you can hope in a lot of things. But is it a founded, tested, true hope? Jesus is that hope. And Paul is saying, do not be deceived by thinking that your deeds performed of the law are going to save you. Galatians 3 verse 22 tells us, but the scripture has confined or confirmed, I should say, all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Let me ask you, don't say anything out loud, but look at, look at that 22nd verse. Do you believe that? Don't say it, but do you believe that? If I were to just say to you, and look, I am nobody. I'm just a mere pathetic little man, but could you imagine if God looked in your face and said right now, do you believe, verse 22, is that your worldview? But the scripture has confined all under sin, though mankind is lost without Christ, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This is absolutely fundamental. But look, verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law. In other words, the law showed us our need. Kept for the faith, which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor. The word in Greek is pedagogus. The schoolmaster that drives you to learn, to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Church family, listen. Why do we want to read the Old Testament? Why do we want to read God's law? Because it drives us to Christ. I tell you what, you want to appreciate Jesus? Read your Old Testament. You'd be so glad that he's the one that met all the demands. And then finally, we end right here. The end of verse 20, we learn this, that there's an elusive hope that fails us. There's an elusive hope that can fail. It says, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Psalm 14, 2 says, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Verse three, they have all turned aside. They have altogether become corrupt. There is none who does good. No, not one. Don't answer, but I would ask, do you believe that? Think of that. Say, man, this is really, this is really hitting me, Jack. Good. That's a good thing. Philippians 3, 9 says, and this is, this is a great scripture to, to commit to life. Philippians 3.9 announces this to us. Being found in him. Listen, friend, you need to be found in him. Not having my own righteousness. 
our own righteousness, which is from the law. It's unacceptable if it's from the law. But that which is through faith in Christ, because he's the only one who kept the law. The righteousness which is from God by faith. Have you put your faith in Jesus Christ? Because verse 20 ends with this glorious challenge to us. The elusive hope condemns us. An elusive hope condemns. But I thank God that he doesn't invite us to an elusive hope. God's hope is sure and steadfast. I've never heard of one person ever become a Christian and 20 years later say, I am so disappointed in having become a Christian. (laughs) I've never heard somebody say, you know what? God really let me down over there on that one. I got to tell you, I'm going to be honest here, okay? Listen, people, especially men, and I get it. Now, after I say this, this will never happen again. (laughs) But men will come to me and they'll say, listen, are you listening, everybody? Men will come to me and say, Pastor, I really love the Lord. But I really struggle with pornography. I just can't stop. I read my Bible every day. Listen, I pray all the time. I don't know what's going on. Put yourself in my shoes. Do I respond like this? Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, really? You love God. You read all the time and you pray all the time. Oh, let's go out and hang ourselves together. Let's just do it together because there's no hope. If you're doing all that, God has let you down. Do you hear, do you hear what's being said? Did you get it? Pastor, I love God. I read his word. I pray all the time. But I'm addicted to porn. You know what I tell them? Never say again you love God. I tell them. I say to them, never say you love God again, please. Don't ever say that again. You are not reading the Bible. And you are not praying all the time. Because what you're doing is everything that you just said, and the Holy Spirit would never allow this to happen, everything you said, put the blame on God. He's not listening. His word's not powerful enough. He's let me down. Poor me. No, you know what? You love it more than you love him. And whatever else it might be in your life, if it, it, it could be money, it could be gambling, it could be whatever, or power. So enough with that. That's a false hope. See, Jack, that's pretty tough stuff. I understand that it is. We're all done. Let me, let me put it to you this way. According to the scripture, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of humanity. The moment Adam and Eve blew it, it set off in the spiritual realm, in, in the human psyche, in the human soul, launched a demeanor. It launched a, a, a virus in the soul. And they had the first two boys they gave birth to, Cain and Abel. One was a murderer. You know, I always use that regarding gun control. We need gun control. No, we don't. Guns are awesome. Let's, come on, they're awesome. They're fun. If you ever shoot a gun, it's a blast. God put in the mind of man to create a gun. It's brilliant. It's, it's fun. As long as you don't go shooting with women, because women are always better shots than men. Right? We're all over the place, and a woman just lay, she just, my, my daughters, my wife, they just lay it right on the dot. It's like, I'm like, guns don't kill anybody. It's the lunatic that kills people. So who should do away with guns? Okay, do away with guns, but the day that you do, do away with knives, rocks, bats, cars, hands. Come on. We just, we fiddle on the outside. We don't go down to the core. It's in the heart. You don't have to talk about gun control. We need to talk about heart control. We need Jesus in our lives. We're all prone to these things, but we're all... Not prone to sinning, we're sinners. So I am on Southwest Airlines flight 1140, Ontario to Sacramento. 
it's a short flight, but I had coffee. And all of a sudden, I realized someone's eating onions on this plane. <laughs> 135 people packed into this plane, and somebody thought that they would bring a Ziploc baggie of a raw onion and start eating it on the plane. And I got to tell you, we're sitting there, and everyone's going. And it's just like, this is not going away. <laughs> and people are looking, I'm looking, we're looking, and said, what in the world is going on? And I took a drink from my coffee, and my coffee cup <laughs> smelled like onions. <laughs> and then I could smell my hand and my hand smelled like onions. I want you to know that in 64 years, I have never forgotten to put on deodorant. <laughs> never, not once. Except I must have gotten either a bad batch of Dove or I forgot to put deodorant on. I'm sitting there, I had black on. You should always travel in black in case you spill anything. I'm looking okay. And I realize this plane stinks. <laughs> my hand stinks, my coffee stinks. And I found out <laughs> I'm the one. So what do you do? You get up, you go to the lavatory, right? And you use hand cleaner. <laughs> I'm hand cleaning, I'm panicking. And the whole plane, I stepped out of the plane's bathroom and I could smell onions. And I go and I sit and say, you're not gonna tell anybody this, right? <laughs> and I sat down and that one hour and 20 minutes was probably more like 24 hours. It was so painful. And it turns out that I'm sitting there on that plane and I'm thinking, before all this stuff happens, Lord, I wonder how many believers are on this plane. I wonder how many lost people are on this plane. And I'm thinking, I'm going through my process, and I'm thinking, and little do the 135 people who are going, man, somebody's eating onions. There's somebody stinking this plane up. It was Pastor Jack stinking that plane up. <laughs> what are you saying this for, Pastor? Because all of us smell like onions until Jesus washes us clean. Okay, I want you to know that that illustration has come to you at my own expense. <laughs>
So friends, listen, we would love for you to know more. You can find out more and study more of the scriptures with us at jackhibbs.com. Until then, God bless you guys. Revisionists would have you believe the Bible had little to do with the making of America, but that's simply not true. In his excellent book, 100 Bible Verses That Made America, Robert J. Morgan explores how scripture has played an integral role in our nation's history from its founding to today. In short devotion-like chapters, you'll read how specific Bible verses influence leaders and events that have shaped America as we know it. God's not done using scripture to impact the nation. He's looking for men and women of faith to influence history. Will you be a part? Reignite your love for both your country and your Bible through this compelling new book, 100 Bible Verses That Made America, is our gift to you and thanks for your donation to the Ministry of Real Life with Jack Hibbs. To get your copy, go to jackhibbs.com, scan the QR code, or call 877-777-2346. Order your copy now. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there, you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.